In recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats, and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. I need to speak to you all this evening because this situation has gone on long enough and demands a response not just from government, but from all of us. Britain is a patriotic, liberal, democratic society with a proud past and a bright future. We're a reasonable country and a decent people. Our story is one of progress, of great achievements and enduring values. Immigrants who have come here have integrated and contributed. They have helped write the latest chapter in our island story. They have done this without being required to give up their identity. You can be a practicing Hindu and a proud Briton as I am, or a devout Muslim and a patriotic citizen as so many are, or a committed Jewish person and the heart of your local community, and all underpinned by the tolerance of our established Christian church. We are a country where we love our neighbors and we are building Britain together. But I fear that our great achievement in building the world's most successful multi-ethnic, multi-faith democracy is being deliberately undermined. There are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. Since October the 7th, there have been those trying to take advantage of the very human angst that we all feel about the terrible suffering that war brings to the innocent, to women and children, to advance a divisive, hateful ideological agenda. On too many occasions recently, our streets have been hijacked by small groups who are hostile to our values and have no respect for our democratic traditions. Membership of our society is contingent on some simple things, that you abide by the rule of law and that change can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Threats of violence and intimidation are alien to our way of doing things. They must be resisted at all times. Nearly everyone in Britain supports these basic values, but there are small and vocal hostile groups who do not. Islamist extremists and the far right feed off and embolden each other. They are equally desperate to pretend that their violence is somehow justified when actually these groups are two sides of the same extremist coin. Neither group except that change in our country can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Both loathe the pluralist modern country we are. Both want to set Britain against Britain to weaponize the evils of anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim hatred for their own ends. The faith of Islam, peacefully practiced by millions of our fellow citizens, is emphatically not the same thing as the extremist political ideology of Islamism which aims to separate Muslims from the rest of society. Islamist extremists and far-right groups are spreading a poison. That poison is extremism. It aims to drain us of our confidence in ourselves as a people and in our shared future. They want us to doubt ourselves, to doubt each other, to doubt our country's history and achievements. They want us to accept a moral equivalence between Britain and some of the most despicable regimes in the world. They want us to believe that our country and the West more generally is solely responsible for the world's ills and that we, along with our allies, are the problem. In short, they want to destroy our confidence and hope. 
we must not allow that to happen. When these groups claim that Britain is and has been on the wrong side of history, we should reject it and reject it again. No country is perfect. But I am enormously proud of the good that our country has done. Our place in history is defined by the sacrifices our people have made in the service of their own freedom and that of others. And when these groups tell our children that they cannot and will not succeed because of who they are, when they tell children that the system is rigged against them or that Britain is a racist country, this is not only a lie, but a cynical attempt to crush young dreams and turn impressionistic minds against their own society. I stand here as our country's first non-white prime minister leading the most diverse government in our country's history to tell people of all races, all faiths and all backgrounds, it is not the color of your skin, the God you believe in or where you were born that will determine your success, but just your own hard work and endeavor. And we must be prepared to stand up for our shared values in all circumstances, no matter how difficult. And I respect that the police have a tough job in policing the protests we have seen and that they are operationally independent. But we must draw a line. Yes, you can march and protest with passion. You can demand the protection of civilian life. But no, you cannot call for violent jihad. There is no context in which it can be acceptable to beam anti-Semitic tropes onto Big Ben in the middle of a vote on Israel-Gaza. And there can be no cause that you can use to justify the support of a prescribed terrorist group like Hamas. And yes, you can freely criticize the actions of this government or indeed any government. That is a fundamental democratic right. But no, you cannot use that as an excuse to call for the eradication of a state or any kind of hatred or anti-Semitism. This week, I've met with senior police officers and made clear it is the public's expectation that they will not merely manage these protests, but police them. And I say this to the police, we will back you when you take action. But if we are asking more of the police, we in government must also back up that call with action. To that end, this month the government will implement a new robust framework for how it deals with this issue to ensure that we are dealing with the root causes of this problem and that no extremist organizations or individuals are being lent legitimacy by their actions and interactions with central government. You cannot be part of our civic life if your agenda is to tear it down. We will redouble our support for the PREVENT program to stop young minds being poisoned by extremism. We will demand that universities stop extremist activity on campus. We will also act to prevent people entering this country whose aim is to undermine its values. The Home Secretary has instructed that if those here on visas choose to spew hate or protest or seek to intimidate people, we will remove their right to be here. And our Britain must not be a country in which we descend into polarized camps with some communities living parallel lives. It is not enough to live side by side. We must live together, united by shared values and a shared commitment to this country. And I want to speak directly to those who choose to continue to protest. Don't let the extremists hijack your marches. You have a chance in the coming weeks to show that you can protest decently, peacefully, and with empathy for your fellow citizens. Let us prove these extremists wrong and show them that even when we disagree, we will never be disunited from our common values of decency and respect. I love this country. My family and I owe it so much. The time has now come for us all to stand together to combat the forces of division and beat this poison. We must face down the extremists who would tear us apart. There must be leadership, not pandering or appeasement. When they tell their lies, 
we will tell the truth. When they try and sap our confidence, we will redouble our efforts. And when they try and make us doubt each other, we will dig deeper for that extra ounce of compassion and empathy that they want us to believe doesn't exist, but that I know does. If we do that, we can build on our great achievement in creating today's Britain, a country of kind, decent, tolerant people. We can make this a country in which we all feel a renewed sense of pride. This is our home. So let us go forward together, confident in our values and confident in our future. And that was the Prime Minister. What a speech. What an extraordinary What an amazing speech. I don't know what you feel like doing, but I might as well say what I feel. I feel like standing up and cheering. I, I feel a little bit like crying. I feel, I feel incredibly moved by it. I thought that was the most um, tremendously galvanising, unifying, poetic, uh, from the heart, sincere plea for kindness, tolerance, all the values that make us proud unity. of the British. Unity. Unity. Above all, unity, so that we're not going to be severed and divided and played off against one another. And 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 it's one of those one of those speeches, I think, that wherever or whoever your God is or whether you have none, you wish it to go straight from the Prime Minister's mouth to God ear, God's ears. That's how I feel about that speech. I thought that was phenomenal. It was an extraordinary political intervention. It was from the heart. It was something that needed to be said, I think. It's really interesting that he made a very personal attack on George Galloway as well, but he's of course talking about a lot of different issues. And really he's talking about what a Britain that Rishi Sunak thinks should exist, mm -hmm. uh, which doesn't at the moment. Some people will say this is too late. Some people will say this the horse is bolted in regard to unity and re regard to the idea of multiculturalism and whether it works or whether it doesn't. But certainly an extraordinary intervention by a Prime Minister and a very, very absolutely fascinating words that he had to I say. I mean, he's absolutely he... right, isn't he? Not to allow it to be too late. It yes. can never be too late yes. to fight for democracy. Mm. It can never be too late to fight for integrity. And it can never be too late to fight for tolerance and empathy and free speech and a lack of intimidation so that everybody in this country can go about their business, as he says, believing in your God, as he says, you know, absolutely true to your own heritage, your ethnicity, your geography, wherever you came from, whatever you think, whatever you believe, that you can believe this in harmony with the guy next door who doesn't believe anything of the kind, but allows you to believe what you believe allows you to study and, and make good and enjoy life and have a quality and calibre of life that won't be blighted because of who you are or where you came from or whatever it is. I mean, look, for God's sake, what else could we possibly want for our country than that? Mm, I think is, that's that's what we all want, And it's it? a very, very clear statement of his values and the values of the country and the kind of country that Rishi Sunak wants to create. Whether he'll have an opportunity to do that, whether anyone will listen to this, and we were listening to it, yeah. but whether those who he really wants to reach, which is those who would give some sucker to Islamism, mm. uh, especially people who are perhaps on some of those marches who have peaceful intentions, but he made a direct plea to them to say not to give sucker to Islamism. Very, very interesting from that perspective. He talked about far-right extremism as well and made a very clear attack on George Galloway. Absolutely fascinating. I mean, what's going to happen, isn't it, is that every single part of that speech is going to be deconstructed yeah. and examined and debated and discussed and there's going to be discourse and I hope it's going to be peaceful. I mean, one of the things he said that I could hear was immensely controversial, even when he said it was, you know, that it will not be your race, it will not be your background that holds you back in this mm. country. It won't be that. If you work hard, yeah. you will succeed. Now, there are going to be people listening to that saying, but that's just not true. Oh, people will talk not, about structural not, racism. Not people a level talk about, playing field. There, there, there's a vogue to say that Britain is a racist country. Yeah. Many, many people, including me, disagree with that per se. There's a lot here that many people will disagree with. Mm. George Galloway as well, I'm sure, will be out of the stocks, probably on Twitter already, yeah. saying this is desperation, this is how scared the political establishment is of him, uh, I would imagine he will make political capital out of it as well. It'll be absolutely fascinating to, to see To me, what though, it didn't sound like a scared man who was frantically, mm. you know, peddling beneath the surface, or paddling beneath the surface to keep, keep himself looking calm. I thought it sounded like a man of tremendous conviction mm. who genuinely believes in equality, who genuinely believes in opportunity and who genuinely believes in tolerance. Yeah trying to say with 
absolute statesmanship and conviction. Look, this is what we're all aiming for. This is what we want. This is the country that we want to be proud of. So don't allow it to dismantle, not just under his watch, but under all our watches. You know, we're collectively responsible for this. So we must not collude in dismantling all the things we really care about. And I thought he said it absolutely excellently, did you know He that? said it very, very yeah. defiantly, certainly, and many people, a lot of what he's saying will resonate with a lot of people. The question is, is it too late? And also, why is he making it now? What is the motivation now? He will say, of course, that it's because of the last few weeks, it's mm -hmm. because of what's happened since the 7th of October, and because of what, but the most recent major political event is, of course, the Rothschild by-election, and there will be some people who will say, yes, he sounded very defiant, he was very uh, straightforward in what he was saying, and he was clearly very passionate. But in terms of saying it now, I think people will say, and, and George Galloway will certainly say, that he's running scared of George Galloway, which is a really, really interesting position for the Prime Minister well, of this country of to be most, in. One of the most eminent and sagacious medieval rabbis was a rabbi called Hillel. And one of the things that he said was, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I am for myself alone, what am I? And this is the crucial bit. And if not now, when? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is now, this is the time to say it before, I suppose, things deteriorate in a dramatic way that all of us will deeply regret if we simply allow ourselves to be inert or immobile or paralysed and watch it happen. Although many people feel that that inertia and that de deterioration is happening already and there is a real worry about that. So certainly I think you're absolutely right, uh, Vanessa, but at the same time many people will feel this, is, this should have been made, you know, perhaps decades ago that people will feel that multiculturalism hasn't uh, succeeded and that is something that has actually caused many problems. We have many people living separately in our society Society, not talking to their neighbours, not knowing about their neighbours or knowing what their uh, views are or why they believe what they are. Peter, thank you very much indeed.